Off the coast of Japan, shrouded in mist and mystery, lies Nagashima. This unassuming volcanic island, once a tranquil haven, is now at the epicenter of a strategic earthquake. Until recently, Nagashima was an untouched sanctuary, a silent testament to nature's power. Its volcanic slopes rose from the sea, untouched by human ambition. Only the whispers of the wind and the cries of seabirds disturbed its solitude. However, the tranquility of Nagashima has been disrupted. The roar of construction machinery now echoes across the island, replacing the sounds of nature with the clang of progress. This transformation is not for tourism or industry, but for a far more potent purpose military strategy. The once deserted beaches now witness the arrival of ships, their hulls laden with steel, concrete and the tools of war. The intent is clear to transform Nagashima into a fortress, a strategic asset in a region on the brink of a new era of geopolitical rivalry. This transformation of Nagashima is not an isolated incident, but a single piece in a much larger puzzle. It signifies a shift in the global order, a recalibration of power dynamics that has far-reaching implications. The activity on Nagashima is not merely about building runways and ammunition depots, it's about establishing a strategic foothold in a region of paramount importance. The island's location, nestled along the first island chain, is no geographical coincidence. This chain, stretching from Japan through Taiwan and down to the Philippines, forms a natural barrier to the Pacific Ocean. For Japan, bolstering defenses along this chain is crucial. It serves as a protective barrier, aligning the sand against potential threats. But Nagashima's significance extends beyond Japan's immediate security concerns. Its development aligns with a broader strategy, one spearheaded by the United States. The US, recognizing the island chain's strategic significance, has actively encouraged and supported Japan's efforts. This collaboration is a testament to the strengthening alliance between the two nations, a partnership forged in the face of growing regional challenges. The driving force behind this strategic maneuvering is undeniable, the rise of China. China's expanding military might and assertive foreign policy have sent ripples of concern throughout the region. The US, long the dominant power in the Pacific, sees this development as a direct challenge to its interests and influence. Nagashima, therefore, represents more than just concrete and steel. It embodies the escalating rivalry between the world's two superpowers. The island's transformation is a tangible manifestation of the US commitment to maintaining its presence in the region a signal that it will not cede ground to China's ambitions. However, this strategic maneuvering is not without risks. The militarization of Nagashima, while intended as a deterrent, could be perceived by China as a provocation. It raises the specter of an arms race, a dangerous spiral of escalation that could inadvertently increase the risk of conflict. The once quiet shores of Nagashima are now abuzz with activity, a symphony of construction orchestrated to transform the island into a formidable military outpost. Giant cranes swing their steel arms, meticulously placing concrete blocks that form the foundation of the island's new purpose. The air hums with the whine of welding torches as workers assemble prefabricated structures, their silhouettes stark against the rising sun. The centerpiece of this transformation is the construction of two state-of-the-art runways. These are not mere airstrips designed for light aircraft. They are robust, extended stretches of tarmac capable of accommodating the most advanced fighter jets and heavy transport planes. Their length and design speak volumes about the ambition behind Nagashima's transformation, hinting at the scale and nature of the military presence it is designed to support. Adjacent to these runways, vast storage facilities are taking shape there, reinforced concrete walls designed to withstand the harshest conditions. These bunkers, discreetly tucked away amidst the island's natural folds, are intended to house a significant arsenal, including ammunition, missiles, and other vital military equipment. The sheer scale of these facilities underscores the strategic importance of Nagashima, transforming it into a forward logistics hub capable of sustaining a prolonged military operation. The construction process is a testament to meticulous planning and logistical prowess. Ships arrive regularly, their holds disgorging a constant stream of building materials, heavy machinery and supplies. The pace of work is relentless, a 24-7 operation driven by the urgency of the geopolitical situation. Every passing day brings Nagashima closer to its intended role, a bastion of military might in a region grappling with uncertainty. Beyond the concrete and steel, Nagashima's transformation extends to its technological capabilities. 
particularly in the realm of surveillance and intelligence gathering. The island is being outfitted with an array of sophisticated sensors and radar systems, their dishes and antennas piercing the sky like watchful sentinels. These are not mere listening posts, they are the eyes and ears of a powerful military force designed to provide early warning and real-time situational awareness. The data collected by these systems will be invaluable in monitoring maritime traffic, tracking aircraft movements and detecting potential threats in the surrounding waters and airspace. This enhanced surveillance capability is crucial in a region where tensions run high and the balance of power is constantly shifting. It provides a critical advantage in a potential conflict, allowing for rapid response and informed decision-making. Nagashima's geographic location amplifies the effectiveness of these surveillance systems. Situated along the first island chain, it serves as a strategic choke point, offering a panoramic view of vital shipping lanes and air routes. Any movement by China's military forces in the region, be it naval vessels traversing the East China Sea or aircraft conducting exercises, will be closely scrutinized. This enhanced surveillance capability is not solely about defense, it also serves as a deterrent. The message to potential adversaries is clear. Their actions are being monitored, their movements tracked, and any aggression will be met with a swift and decisive response. Nagashima, therefore, becomes a key component in a broader strategy of deterrence, aiming to maintain stability and prevent conflict in the region. The transformation of Nagashima represents a significant shift in the United States military posture in the Pacific. Traditionally, the US military presence in the region has been concentrated in a handful of large bases, such as those in Okinawa, Japan and Guam. However, the evolving security environment, particularly the rise of China, has necessitated a more dispersed and agile approach. Nagashima, with its strategic location and growing military capabilities, embodies this new approach. It provides the US with a valuable forward operating base, allowing for a more rapid and flexible response to potential crises. Instead of relying solely on distant bases, the US can now project power and influence more effectively from a location much closer to potential hotspots. This shift is not just about geography, it's also about logistics and operational efficiency. By prepositioning troops, equipment and supplies at Nagashima, the US can significantly reduce response times in the event of a conflict. This forward deployment of assets is crucial in a region where time is of the essence and the ability to act swiftly could be the deciding factor in a crisis. Furthermore, Nagashima's development strengthens the alliance between the US and Japan. The two countries are working closely together to enhance the island's military capabilities, conducting joint exercises and sharing intelligence. This collaboration sends a powerful signal of unity and resolve to potential adversaries, demonstrating that the US-Japan alliance is prepared to defend its interests in the region. While the transformation of Nagashima strengthens the US and its allies' strategic position in the Pacific, it also carries inherent risks. The militarization of the island, while intended as a deterrent, could be perceived by China as a provocation, exacerbating tensions and potentially sparking an arms race in the region. China has already voiced its displeasure over the development of Nagashima and other islands in the first island chain. Beijing views these actions as a direct challenge to its security interests and a reinforcement of what it perceives as a US-led containment strategy. The risk is that China might respond with its own military build-up, further militarizing the region and increasing the likelihood of miscalculation or unintended escalation. Navigating this complex geopolitical landscape requires a delicate balance. The US and its allies must strive to enhance their defensive capabilities without unnecessarily provoking China. Diplomacy and open lines of communication are crucial in managing tensions and preventing misunderstandings that could lead to conflict. The challenge is to deter aggression while avoiding the self-fulfilling prophecy of a security dilemma, where actions taken to enhance security inadvertently increase the risk of conflict. Nagashima therefore stands as a symbol of both the challenges and opportunities facing the US and its allies in the Pacific, a region poised on the brink of a new era of geopolitical competition. Threads in the Pacific, examining the first island chain's role in containing China. The transformation of Nagashima is not an isolated incident. It's part of a larger strategic tapestry being woven across the Pacific. This tapestry, known as the first island chain, is a string of archipelagos stretching from Japan in the north to the Philippines in the south, forming a natural barrier that encloses the East China Sea and a significant portion of the South China Sea. 
For decades, this island chain has been a focal point of strategic competition. During the Cold War, it served as a crucial line of defence against Soviet expansionism. Today, it finds itself at the heart of the burgeoning rivalry between the United States and China. The US, along with its allies in the region, sees the first island chain as a vital bulwark against China's growing assertiveness. China, for its part, views the first island chain as a constraint, a barrier that limits its access to the Pacific Ocean and hinders its ability to project power beyond its immediate periphery. The Chinese military refers to this strategic dilemma as the first island chain dilemma, highlighting the strategic importance of this maritime geography. The ongoing militarization of islands within the first island chain, with Nagashima as a prime example, is a testament to the strategic importance of this region. By bolstering defenses and enhancing surveillance capabilities along this chain, the US and its allies aim to create a robust deterrent against any potential Chinese aggressions. The message is clear. The first island chain is a line in the sand, and any attempt to cross it will be met with a swift and resolute response. More than missiles understanding the multifaceted approach to countering Chinese ambitions, the strategy employed by the United States and its allies in the Pacific extends beyond simply deploying military hardware. It's a multi-pronged approach that combines military strength with diplomatic engagement, economic partnerships, and support for democratic values. The goal is not just to contain China, but to shape its behavior and encourage it to play a responsible role on the global stage. One key element of this strategy is strengthening alliances and partnerships in the region. The US has long-standing security treaties with Japan, South Korea, Australia, and the Philippines, and it is actively working to deepen these relationships. This includes conducting joint military exercises, sharing intelligence, and providing military aid and training. Another important aspect is promoting economic integration and free trade. The US is a strong advocate for a rules-based international order, and it sees economic cooperation as a key pillar of stability and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region. This includes supporting initiatives like the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a free trade agreement that aims to promote economic growth and development in the region. Furthermore, the US is actively promoting democracy, human rights, and the rule of law in the Indo-Pacific. The belief is that by supporting these values, the US can help foster a more stable and prosperous region, one that is less likely to experience conflict. This multi-pronged approach reflects the complex challenges of engaging with a rising power like China. It recognizes that military strength alone is not enough to ensure stability and security. It must be complemented by diplomatic, economic, and ideological efforts. The Balancing Act, Australia's pivotal role in the Indo-Pacific strategy. Australia, a continent nation geographically positioned at the crossroads of the Indian and Pacific Oceans, is playing an increasingly vital role in the evolving security architecture of the region. Traditionally a staunch ally of the United States, Australia has long been a pillar of stability in the Indo-Pacific, but the rise of China has prompted a reassessment of its strategic priorities and a deepening of its commitment to regional security. Recognizing the shifting geopolitical landscape, Australia has embraced a more proactive approach to regional security. This includes bolstering its own military capabilities, strengthening alliances with like-minded partners, and deepening its engagement in regional security forums. A prime example of this strategic shift is Australia's participation in the AUKUS Pact, a trilateral security agreement between Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. This pact, announced in 2021, includes a landmark agreement to provide Australia with nuclear-powered submarines, a move that significantly enhances Australia's naval capabilities and sends a strong signal of deterrence to potential adversaries. Beyond AUKUS, Australia is deepening its defence cooperation with Japan, India and other countries in Southeast Asia. It is also playing a more active role in regional security forums like the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and the East Asia Summit. Australia's strategic importance lies not only in its military capabilities, but also in its geographic location, its robust economy, and its commitment to democratic values. These factors make Australia a valuable partner in efforts to maintain a free and open Indo-Pacific, a region where all countries can prosper and thrive. Section 4. 
The Paradox of Preparation Confronting the Risks of Escalation in the Name of Deterrence The militarization of islands like Nagashima and the strengthening of alliances in the Pacific are driven by a fundamental paradox of international relations, the need to prepare for conflict in order to prevent it. This concept, known as deterrence theory, posits that a credible threat of military force can dissuade potential adversaries from aggression. The challenge of deterrence lies in finding the right balance. Too little military preparedness can embolden adversaries and make conflict more likely. However, excessive militarization can be perceived as provocative, fueling an arms race and increasing the risk of miscalculation or unintended escalation. The current situation in the Pacific highlights the delicate nature of this balancing act. The United States and its allies are determined to deter Chinese aggression, but they also recognize the need to avoid actions that could be misconstrued or could lead to a dangerous spiral of escalation. Navigating this complex geopolitical landscape requires a nuanced approach that combines military strength with diplomacy, economic engagement, and a commitment to international norms and institutions. It also requires clear communication and a willingness to engage in dialogue with potential adversaries to manage differences and reduce the risk of conflict. The transformation of Nagashima, therefore, serves as a reminder of the high stakes involved in maintaining peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific. It underscores the need for a comprehensive and calibrated approach that prioritizes diplomacy and dialogue while maintaining a credible deterrent against aggression. Section 1. A Wall of Iron and Silicon How Technology Underpins the First Island Chain Strategy While concrete and steel form the physical backbone of the first island chain, it is technology, particularly in the realms of surveillance and precision strike, that truly amplifies its strategic significance. The island chain is being woven together by a sophisticated network of sensors, radar systems and long-range missiles, creating a formidable barrier that is both visible and invisible, physical and digital. At the heart of this technological web lies the concept of distributed lethality. This doctrine, embraced by the United States and its allies, emphasizes the ability to strike adversaries from multiple points using a combination of mobile networked platforms. It moves away from the traditional reliance on large centralized bases and instead favors a more agile and resilient approach, dispersing firepower across a wider area. This distributed lethality is enabled by advanced sensor networks that provide real-time situational awareness. These networks, incorporating satellites, maritime patrol aircraft, underwater drones and ground-based radar systems, create a comprehensive picture of the battle space, allowing commanders to track enemy movements, identify threats and direct firepower with pinpoint accuracy. Complementing this enhanced surveillance capability is a growing arsenal of long-range precision-guided missiles. These missiles, deployed on ships, aircraft and land-based launchers, can strike targets hundreds, even thousands of miles away, with devastating accuracy. This long-range strike capability is a game-changer in the Pacific, as it allows the United States and its allies to hold potential adversaries at risk, even from afar. The integration of artificial intelligence, AI, further enhances the effectiveness of this network defense system. AI algorithms can analyze vast amounts of sensor data, identify patterns and predict enemy intentions, providing commanders with invaluable insights and decision-making support. Section 2, The Silent Guardians, examining the role of submarines in shaping the Pacific chessboard. Beneath the surface of the Pacific, a silent and stealthy game of chess is unfolding. Submarines, often overlooked in discussions of military power, are playing an increasingly crucial role in shaping the strategic balance in the region. Their ability to operate undetected for extended periods, coupled with their potent firepower, makes them a formidable deterrent and a critical asset in any potential conflict. The United States, with its decades of experience in submarine warfare, remains the undisputed leader in this domain. Its fleet of nuclear-powered attack submarines, SSNs, and guided missile submarines, SSGNs, are among the most advanced and capable in the world. Equipped with sophisticated sonar systems, torpedoes, and cruise missiles, China, recognizing the strategic importance of submarine warfare, has been rapidly expanding and modernizing its own submarine fleet. While still lagging behind the United States in terms of technology and experience, China's submarine force is growing in both size and capability, posing a growing challenge to US naval dominance. The AUKUS Pact, which includes the provision of nuclear-powered submarines to Australia, adds a new dimension to the undersea competition in the Pacific. 
This move, while controversial, significantly bolsters the undersea capabilities of the United States and its allies, creating a more formidable deterrent against Chinese aggression. Submarines, unlike surface ships, are less vulnerable to detection and attack, making them ideal for conducting intelligence gathering, special operations, and in a worst case scenario, launching devastating strikes with conventional or even nuclear weapons. Their presence in the Pacific serves as a constant reminder of the high stakes involved and the potential for escalation. Section 3, Beyond the Horizon, the global implications of a militarized Pacific. The escalating military competition in the Pacific has profound implications that extend far beyond the region itself. The Indo-Pacific, home to some of the world's most populous nations and vital shipping lanes, is increasingly seen as the epicenter of global geopolitics. The outcome of the strategic rivalry between the United States and China in this region will have far-reaching consequences for the international order. Economically, the Indo-Pacific is a powerhouse, accounting for a significant portion of global trade and economic activity. The region's stability and prosperity are crucial for the health of the global economy. Any disruption to trade or investment flows in the region would have ripple effects felt worldwide. Politically, the Indo-Pacific is a region of diverse ideologies and competing interests. The rise of China, with its authoritarian model of governance, challenges the existing liberal international order, creating tensions and prompting a reassessment of alliances and partnerships. Militarily, the Indo-Pacific is becoming increasingly volatile with growing military spending and modernization programs across the region. The risk of miscalculation or unintended escalation is a constant concern, as is the potential for regional conflicts to draw in external powers. The stakes in the Pacific, therefore, are high. Section 4, a world on edge navigating the uncertain terrain of great power competition. The world stands at a crossroads, facing the daunting challenge of managing great power competition in the 21st century. The rivalry between the United States and China, while not a new phenomenon, has intensified in recent years, fueled by a complex interplay of geopolitical, economic and ideological factors. This competition, if not carefully managed, has the potential to escalate into conflict, with devastating consequences for all involved. The challenge lies in finding ways to compete responsibly without resorting to confrontation or jeopardizing global stability. This requires a nuanced understanding of each other's interests and red lines, as well as a commitment to dialogue and diplomacy. One key area of concern is the risk of miscalculation or accidents. As military activities increase in the Pacific, so too does the potential for misunderstandings or unintended escalation. Establishing clear channels of communication, confidence-building measures and mechanisms for crisis management are crucial for mitigating these risks. Another challenge is the potential for an arms race. As both sides seek to enhance their military capabilities, there is a risk of a spiraling competition that could lead to instability and undermine regional security. Finding ways to limit arms races, promote transparency and build trust will be essential for avoiding this dangerous dynamic. The path forward requires a commitment to dialogue, diplomacy and a recognition of shared interests. While competition between great powers is inevitable, it need not lead to conflict. By embracing a spirit of cooperation and finding common ground, the US and China can navigate the challenges of the 21st century and build a more stable and prosperous future for all. Section 1. Echoes of the Cold War drawing, parallels between past and present. The spectre of the Cold War with its ideological battles, proxy wars and ever-present threat of nuclear annihilation looms large over the current geopolitical landscape. While the current rivalry between the United States and China differs in significant ways from the standoff between the US and the Soviet Union, there are undeniable parallels that offer both cautionary tales and potential lessons for navigating the current era of great power competition. The most striking similarity is the emergence of two dominant powers, each with its own sphere of influence, ideological convictions and determination to shape the international order according to its own vision. Just as the US and the Soviet Union engaged in a global struggle for supremacy, the US and China now find themselves locked in a competition for economic, technological and military dominance. Another parallel is the tendency towards bloc politics and the formation of competing alliances. The Cold War saw the emergence of NATO and the Warsaw Pact dividing the world into two armed camps. 
Today, while formal military alliances are less rigid, there is a clear trend towards the formation of strategic partnerships based on shared interests and concerns about China's rise. The AUKUS Pact, the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, Quad, and the strengthening of US alliances with Japan, South Korea, and Australia all point to this trend. However, there are also crucial differences between the Cold War and the current era. Unlike the Soviet Union, China is deeply integrated into the global economy and plays a vital role in international trade and finance. This economic interdependence creates both opportunities and constraints, making conflict potentially more costly but also providing avenues for cooperation. Section 2. The Perils of Encirclement Understanding China's Perspective and Potential Reactions the United States and its allies view the strengthening of the first island chain as a defensive measure designed to deter Chinese aggression and maintain stability in the Indo-Pacific. However, from China's perspective, these actions can easily be interpreted as part of a broader strategy of containment aimed at limiting its rise and preventing it from achieving its rightful place on the world stage. China has a long and bitter historical memory of being exploited and humiliated by foreign powers. The century of humiliation, as it is known in China, refers to a period from the mid-19th to the mid-20th centuries when China faced internal strife, foreign invasion and a loss of sovereignty. This historical experience has instilled in China a deep sense of national pride and a determination to never again be vulnerable to external pressure. From China's perspective, the strengthening of the First Island Chain, combined with the AUKUS Pact, the Quad, and the increased US military presence in the region, looks suspiciously like an attempt to encircle China, to contain its rise and to prevent it from achieving its economic and geopolitical potential. This perception of encirclement is likely to fuel Chinese suspicions and could lead to countermeasures that further escalate tensions. China might respond to these perceived threats by accelerating its own military modernization programs, expanding its naval presence in the South China Sea and strengthening its ties with countries that share its concerns about US hegemony. It could also resort to more assertive economic or diplomatic measures such as imposing trade restrictions or punishing countries that align too closely with the United States. Section 3. Charting a course through troubled waters. The imperative of diplomacy and dialogue. The escalating rivalry between the United States and China presents a profound challenge to global peace and security. The stakes are high, the risks are real, and the consequences of miscalculation or unintended escalation could be catastrophic. In this context, diplomacy and dialogue are not optional luxuries, but essential tools for managing competition, preventing conflict, and finding common ground. The first step towards de-escalation is to establish clear and open channels of communication. This includes regular high-level summits between leaders, military-to-military -military hotlines to manage crises, and working-level dialogues on issues of mutual concern. The goal is to build trust, reduce the risk of misperception, and create mechanisms for resolving disputes peacefully. Equally important is the need to identify areas of common interest and explore opportunities for cooperation. Despite their rivalry, the United States and China share a number of common challenges, including climate change, pandemics, and nuclear proliferation. Addressing these global threats effectively will require cooperation, not confrontation. Furthermore, both sides need to exercise restraint in their rhetoric and actions. Inflammatory language, provocative military exercises, and tit-for-tat responses only serve to heighten tensions and increase the risk of miscalculation. A more measured and responsible approach, focused on dialogue, diplomacy, and de-escalation, is essential for navigating the treacherous waters of great power competition. The future of the Indo-Pacific, and indeed the world, hinges on the ability of the United States and China to manage their rivalry responsibly. Section 1. A precarious balance, reflecting on the costs and consequences of militarization. The transformation of Nagashima from a tranquil island into a fortified outpost stands as a stark symbol of the challenges and dilemmas facing the Indo-Pacific region today. The relentless construction, the deployment of advanced weaponry, and the heightened military readiness all point to a region grappling with uncertainty and the spectre of conflict. While the stated goal of these actions is to deter aggression and maintain stability, it is crucial to acknowledge the inherent risks and potential consequences of this militarization. The most immediate concern is the economic burden of this arms buildup. 
As countries in the region devote increasing resources to military spending, it inevitably comes at the expense of other priorities such as education, healthcare and infrastructure development. This diversion of resources can hinder economic growth, exacerbate social inequalities and undermine long-term prosperity. Moreover, the militarization of the region carries the inherent risk of unintended escalation. As military activities increase, so too does the potential for accidents, miscalculations or misunderstandings that could spiral into conflict. The presence of advanced weaponry, particularly in contested maritime zones, creates a volatile environment where even a minor incident could have dangerous consequences. Furthermore, the focus on military solutions can distract from the underlying political and diplomatic challenges that fuel regional tensions. Territorial disputes, historical grievances and ideological differences cannot be resolved through military means alone. A sustainable peace requires dialogue, compromise and a willingness to address the root causes of conflict. Section 2, The Weight of History, Recognizing the Dangers of Unchecked Nationalism and Rivalry. The escalating tensions in the Indo-Pacific serve as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked nationalism and great power rivalry. History is replete with examples of nations succumbing to the seductive allure of nationalistic fervor, leading to devastating conflicts that leave a lasting legacy of pain and destruction. The rise of China, with its growing economic and military might, has undoubtedly shifted the balance of power in the Indo-Pacific, creating anxieties and prompting a reassessment of strategic priorities. However, it is essential to approach this challenge with a clear-eyed understanding of history and a commitment to avoiding the mistakes of the past. The pursuit of national interest, while a legitimate aspiration, should not come at the expense of international cooperation and stability. A zero-sum mentality where one nation's gain is perceived as another's loss is a recipe for conflict and undermines the collective well-being of the region and the world. It is also crucial to recognize the dangers of historical revisionism and the manipulation of nationalist sentiments for political gain. Appealing to past grievances or exaggerating threats can inflame tensions, erode trust and make finding peaceful solutions more difficult. Section 3, A Call for Restraint and Dialogue, Seeking a Path Towards a More Secure and Cooperative Future. The challenges facing the Indo-Pacific are complex and multifaceted, but the path toward a more secure and prosperous future lies not in militarization and confrontation, but in restraint, dialogue, and a shared commitment to peaceful coexistence. The first step is to de-escalate tensions and reduce the risk of conflict. This requires all parties to exercise restraint in their military activities, avoid provocative rhetoric, and engage in dialogue to address areas of disagreement. Confidence-building measures such as increased transparency in military deployments and the establishment of crisis communication mechanisms can help to reduce the risk of miscalculation and build trust. Equally important is the need to strengthen regional institutions and promote multilateral cooperation. Organizations such as the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, and the East Asia Summit, EAS, provide valuable platforms for dialogue, diplomacy, and the peaceful resolution of disputes. Furthermore, it is essential to address the underlying economic, social and environmental challenges that contribute to regional instability. Promoting sustainable development, addressing climate change and fostering greater economic integration can help to create a more prosperous and equitable region, reducing the incentives for conflict. The future of the Indo-Pacific will be shaped by the choices made today. The path of militarization and rivalry leads to a future of uncertainty, risk and the ever-present threat of conflict. The path of dialogue, cooperation and shared responsibility offers a brighter vision, a future where nations can prosper together in a peaceful and stable region. The international community must summon the wisdom, courage and political will to choose the path of peace.